Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create a SharePoint online site in Microsoft 365. From Microsoft 365 Admin Center, click Show All and then click on SharePoint. From the SharePoint Admin Center homepage, click on Sites and from the drop down, select Active Site. Here in Active Sites page, you will see the list of all the active sites, or I should say all the active SharePoint site in your, in your tenant. For example, you see the names, URLs, and under the template, you'll see what type of SharePoint sites you have. Here in my tenant, I have one communication site and I have a few team sites here. To create a new SharePoint site, click on create. And here from the menu, you will see we have two SharePoint sites. We have a team site and we have a communication site. There are a few differences between communication and team sites. For a communication site, you can think of it as a company intranet or a blog or, or a website for everyone in your company. For example, HR SharePoint site where everyone can go to this site and you know download PDFs, information, or anything that HR wants to share with the entire company. Team site could be something for more specific, for more specific group of people. For example, you want to create a team site for only HR members or finance department, something that you will give access to the few members and team site will have Microsoft teams for instant messaging and a SharePoint site on the back end to share or store data. On this page, you will see we have another tab called other options. And if you click on it, you will see under choose a template, we have more options. We have document center, we have enterprise wiki, publishing portal. And if I click on more templates on this page, create site collection, we have more options. We have collaboration, enterprise publishing and custom. So the under, for example, collaboration, we have team site, we have developer site, project site, sites, or community, community sites, and so on and so forth for enterprise publishing and custom. But for this video, I'm going to create a, a new communication site. Once you click on communication sites, it will take you to another page where you can create your site. We need to name our site. I'm going to call this HR. For site address, I'm going to keep it slash sites because I want to make sure it's a communication site. Site owner, you should have a site owner or you have to have a site owner. And I will keep the language as English. If I click on ad advanced settings, I have two more options. You have time zone and site description, but for now I'm going to keep it like this and I'm going to click on finish. So my site is created. You see here, it's, the name is HR and here's the site owner and the type is communication site. If you click on, on the HR SharePoint site, you have a few more tabs here. Under general, you can change the site name or you can change the site URL. Under the activity, there's no activity because it's just created for permission. You see it's the site admin is this user. Also, he's the owner of the site. There's no site member or site visitor for now. For policies, I made sure that this cannot be shared with outside users. So by default, I think that's going to be your uh, permission level. And if I click on edit, you will see information about sharing settings available for this site. And I'm going to exit out of this menu. If I click on the URL, I can log in or I can access to my new communication site. Because it's a new site, SharePoint will allow you to customize your site. So here we can apply a site template. If I click on get start, I can see there we have a few options here or a few templates where I can pick uh, for my new communication site. Or uh, if there, if I have something created for my organization, I can just pick that template, but I don't have anything. So I'm going to pick department. You can check the template. And if you like this template, you can click use template. So the template has been applied to my new communication sites. And obviously I can change everything here. I can change the pictures. I can change the layout, but for now I'm going to keep my site to be like this. 
So my site is ready and I need to add users or staff to this site. You can do it in a few ways. You can add users directly from the SharePoint side. You can use PowerShell or you can use Azure AD by creating a security group and adding that group to this to the SharePoint site. But for today's video, I'm just going to use the SharePoint site and add one of my users directly from the SharePoint site. To add a new user, click on the gear and then click on site permissions. Here under permissions, you see there are three categories. You have site owners, site members and site visitor. By default, you will see these three main categories anytime you create a new SharePoint site. And under site owners, you see there's one owner here and I don't have any site members or site visitor. Click on advanced permission settings. And from here, you will see the permission levels for each category. Site members can edit, site owners can have full control and site visitors can, can only have read only permission. As a SharePoint admin, it's to totally up to you where you wanna add your users to your site. But for this video, I'm gonna add my user to, to the HR visitors group. Right now I'm under HR visitors and I'm going to click new and click add users. Like I said, I can use security groups to add my user. Like if you have like hundreds of users, you can just use a security group. But for this video, there's only one user, or let's say you want to just add one user. You can just use this method and I'm going to look for my user. And here's this one here. You can include a personal message because the moment that you click share, an email will be sent out to the user. If you don't need to use a personal message because it's considered optional, click on show options and uncheck this box. So now the user will get added to the SharePoint site, but nothing will be sent out to the, to the user. And you may wonder why you need to do this. There's going to be scenarios or cases that you don't want to send email to user because you are using a different template to invite staff or members to a SharePoint site, and you don't need to use this option. So remove this checkbox and click on share. So my user is added to the SharePoint site. I can send the user with my own template and include the link to my SharePoint site. And by clicking on the link, he can access to the SharePoint site. So we're good. I already added my user here as a visitor and I'm going to go back. So while you're on this page, if you click on permission levels, you will see there are two other permissions here beside full control, edit and read. We have design and we have contribute and they are sorted from highest to lowest control. So after full control, we have design, then we have edit, contribute and the lowest is read. And you can see the difference between contribute and read. They are pretty much the same, but if you add someone to the contribute, the user can delete list items and document. Whereas for read, they cannot delete. And if you want to know exactly what's happening, if you click any of these permission levels, for example, if I click on read, you will see the user or the member cannot delete, edit, add, or even delete versions. So the only thing they can do is just view items, open items and view versions. That's how you can see what read permission does. And you can also edit the permission level from here, from this menu. And this is all for today's video. In the future, I'm going to be focusing more on SharePoint and I'm going to show you how you can create custom permissions, how you can remove inheritance on a folder and videos like this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment area. See you all next time.